Okay, so what is object pooling? Okay, so a couple of things. It takes very little overhead to instantiate a class into an object. Um, but not all objects are created equal. So if you have an object that is taking a lot of memory or a lot of processor power mm -hmm. to instantiate, you don't want to instantiate it and just throw it away. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes more work for the garbage collector. Um, mm -hmm. And you're spending a lot of time when you really want to reuse that object. Right. And a lot of times that's difficult to do too um, because you may have... Uh, you need multiple ones all over the place. You can't do just a singleton where you can just have one. Mm -hmm. uh, simplest example you probably work with and don't know would be a SQL connection. Okay. So SQL connections pool internally. So when you grab, and they're heavy. In, they're heavily in. They're hev Yeah, they're heavily intensive to open a connection. Mm -hmm. So when you grab a SQL connection, it's pooled behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with it, which is why we always use using statements, and they get destroyed. Mm -hmm. They really don't get destroyed. They get returned to this imaginary pool. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's better ones we can illustrate with. Uh, one of the ones that I like to use is called an array pool. Okay. So if you have uh, a program that's using a lot of arrays, and, and particularly big arrays, um, they take a lot of energy to create. Right? So if we created a pool of ints, for example, mm -hmm. uh, ints aren't particularly very large. But anytime we create a, a, an int array in the background, whether we like it or not, uh, if you create an int of, let's say, a million, mm -hmm. it has to go through and set every single one of those to zero. Mm -hmm. um, other languages don't do that, but C Sharp does. So uh, it's expensive to create arrays particularly if you're just going to throw them away and recreate them again later. Yeah. So .NET has this built-in array pool, which I really love. So just like you did here, we can create an array pool. Mm -hmm. And now from that array pool, we can keep making arrays and, and, and reusing them. So I'll illustrate here. So if we say ap.rent, okay. which is an interesting verb that I like, we can say, oh, we need, we need an array of 100. So what it's going to do the first time we do this is it's going to say, well, I don't have an array of 100 to give you. I'm going to make one, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give it to you. Okay. Um, when you're done with that array, let's do, say some amount of work happened. Okay. When we're done with that array, we can now say ap.return. Oops, sorry. Hey, look at that. Look at that. I actually figured it out. So what we're saying is, hey, I'm done with this array. I'm going to give it back to you. Mm -hmm. And now it's free for somebody else to use. Now, later on down in code, it could even be us again. We say ap.rent, and we need another array of 100, for example. Mm -hmm. It's going to give us back the same array we left with. OK. Um, and on one of these, I think it's actually on the return process, there's an overload, which I always like to point out on this one. Um, instead of just passing it A, there's one with two parameters. Okay. A, so, um, are you talking? A, yeah, do ap.return, just to illustrate the overload on it. Uh, pass it A. Mm -hmm. And then there's this other parameter called clear array. And you can set that to false. Okay. And I always like to explicitly do that. What it means is when I turn the array in, mm -hmm. it's not going to zero it out, set it back to the default values. Okay. So just know doing that, sometimes you'll come back and you'll say, hey, I need to rent another array. And you might, it might already have data in it. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of know that going into it if you're not clearing them out when you return it back in. But if you've got a program which is generating hundreds of arrays every minute or second or you know more, it's a huge performance gain to be able to put things in and out of this pool as opposed to newing one up every time. So say somewhere else over here in class two, uh -huh. um, I want to pull out that. Is Can I do that or is it just within the so area I'm at? Really to do this correctly, mm -hmm. uh, we need to create a singleton okay. with a single pool. Gotcha. Um, the way we've done it right here on line 12, that's unique to us. 
in okay. that particular stream of thought there that's going on in that particular method. Um, but if we created a singleton of that array pool int, um, I see. everybody in the entire program would share that pool. So there's no real way of going over here and, and hit uh, array pool int and dot um, rent. And, and if I if I did hold on, there is, but we'd have to we'd have to write some code to handle that. Gotcha. This isn't pulling. This this is creating two separate ones. Correct. correct. You'd be making two different pools. This is not in a method, but yeah. I knew what okay. You were, yeah. Um, the other thing to note with array pools, just because I. I like them. The, the one little caveat is um, when you say AP rent 100, you're expecting to get an array that has 100 units long. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee of that. Okay. So if somebody checked in an array that was 120, mm -hmm. and then you tried to rent an array of 100, and it doesn't have an array of 100 to give you, but it's got an array of 120, it'll go ahead and give you that array of 120. Oh, so there, it won't make a new one. Right. And there, there's some rules for how far it's willing to go. But um, the short re answer is you will always get one that is bigger, the size you asked for, or bigger. You'll never get one smaller than you asked for. Mm -hmm. uh, if you asked for 140 and it only has 120, it's going to have to new one up for you. Right. But the short answer is anytime we're dealing with array pools, or anytime we're dealing with object pools, of which array pool is just a particular type, mm -hmm. the point is to create a, a collection of objects that we can pull from as we need and return to when we're done so that we don't have to keep making new ones. Saves on instantiation time, it saves on garbage collection time. Yep. Thank you for watching that video from F12 Programming. Please remember to like and subscribe. That does so much for us in the ratings. You have no idea. Also, don't forget to comment below. I hope you enjoyed and good luck coding.